Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is your host, Elder Gregory Newsom, with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you as we bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's ahead of our life. And we give honor to our Honorable Pastor Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison, Sr. of the Pentecostal Power Church, and to Lady Paulette Murchison, and to my own lovely wife, Missionary Newsom, and to all of you on the Faith in God Internet TV broadcast today. We say God bless you today as we uh, journey a little bit farther into uh, our dispensation of promise. Uh, but we want to start out with our sidebar to uh, definitely acknowledge all of the people of God. God bless you today and uh, want to let you know that we were in revival on last night and uh, uh, we had a great time in the Holy Ghost and God uh, blessed one of our evangelists, Evangelist Lee, uh, to go forward on uh, last night uh, with our revival topic uh, that we need a stir. And so she did a real good job of, of uh, exhorting and sharing the word of the Lord to encourage the hearts of the people of God. And so our hearts are made to be glad because of that. And we have a lot before us today. We want to talk about a lot of things, but we want to get right into uh, our prayer requests for those that are requesting prayer, uh, especially those uh, that are sick among us. We want to uh, uh, pray for them and uh, your families as well. Continue to pray for our pastor, Bishop Murchison and Lady Paulette and the entire Pentecostal Power Church. Uh, continue to pray for our presider and system presiding bishop, uh, Bishop uh, Charles Bennett and uh, Bishop Charles Webb and their wives, Mother Bennett and uh, Mother Webb, continue to pray for them, that the Lord continue to strengthen and encourage, as well as the entire National Pentecostal Power Churches as a whole. Uh, let us just continue to pray for our sick that's among us, those in the hospital, those that are behind prison walls, those that are confined to their spaces and to their homes that they cannot get out, that we will continue to pray that God would uh, continue to encourage them and keep them uh, in this particular hour. And so we want to definitely pray for those particular things. Remember uh, to pray for the Newsom family, continue to pray uh, for my brothers and sisters, uh, naturally so that the Lord will uh, continue to bless my sisters, tearing for the Holy Ghost. So let us pray that the Lord continue to keep our mind and heart encouraged and engaged that she would just uh, continue to have faith. Uh, even uh, we all have tests and trials, whether we save or not, that God will just continue to keep our heart encouraged and she continue to seek the face of the Lord that he may fill our heart with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost as well as all of those that are on the altar tearing uh, because we have some new converts uh, that needs to be converted. And so we want to uh, pray that the Lord will convert those hearts uh, and they'll be hearts of joy, all right? And so that's what we want to be praying for uh, continue to pray for Missionary Newsom and our grandchildren, as well as our daughter Gabrielle. Continue to pray for her, uh, that the Lord will continue to just uh, minister and, you know, help the minds of all of our children and those that are not saved, um, that God will save them and give them deliverance. All right. And so at this time, we're going to go before the throne of grace uh, and go before Lord prayer want to um, see if there's uh, any request that's out there and uh, let's just see here all right so we're gonna just take a look here all right so we're gonna go before strong we don't see any requests out there so we're gonna uh, go ahead and go before the throne of grace at this time with our scripture, our prayer anthem scripture, which is found in uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven, uh, vort, vort, verse number fourteen through sixteen, and uh, let us uh, go before His throne at this time. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open 
in mine ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. So let us go before the throne of grace at this time. Eternal God, our Savior, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we come before thee and before thy throne of grace, we thank you once again, Heavenly Father, for all your many blessings. We thank you, God, for, oh, God, your hand of providence, hand of protection. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for salvation. We thank you for a heart of repentance in the name of Jesus. We thank you for forgiveness of our sins as we pray. We forgive, Lord, those that trespass against us, even our enemies. We pray, Lord, that they would, oh, God, oh, God, find you and they're going through and what they're dealing with right now, God, that their hearts may be, oh God, turn to you in the name of Jesus, God. We pray thy blessings, God, and we pray, God, that you would touch those, oh God, that's yet tearing, that you would fill their hearts with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Lord, direct us now as we pray for your guidance and your, oh God, direction through the word of the Lord. As we talk about the dispensation, oh God, of promise, help us today, Lord God, and give us increase in words of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that may, oh God, edify the body of Christ. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory and the praise, and we thank you for healing and deliverance up, upon those that were yet interceding and praying for. And, oh God, even this time of year, people are filled with anxiety and stress. Oh God, for one day that we, oh God, oh God, consider a, a day of the birth of Christ. But, Father, we pray. Oh, God, that you would open up the true gift. Oh, God, that's given to all men that they might receive. And Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and the praise. And we ask you to bless us, God. Help us to decrease that your anointing may increase. Because, Father, without you, we can certainly do nothing. And so we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and the praise. And, oh, God, we take no credit. Or, oh, God, no, oh, God, oh, God, inspiration, oh, God, or edification for ourselves, but it's all for your glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the glory and the praise. Continue to look on Pastor Reese and his family, Lord God, and all of those that are sick among us. And look on, oh God, Sister Soraya, as well as, oh God, the, those that are on the altar tearing for the Holy Ghost. Look on Mother Summers and those, oh God, that are yet seeking. And even us, God, that's been filled, God, fill our cup, oh God, let it overflow. Oh, God, let it, oh, God, run over, oh, God, with your anointing. We thank you for it. We give you all the glory and the praise. We thank you for a great deliverance coming our way. In Jesus' name, thank God, amen, and amen. Praise God. And so we want to uh, definitely thank the Lord for uh, his manifold blessings. So we want to thank God uh, for his manifold blessing. And so we want to get ready to uh, uh, put some things on the screen for the people of God. And as we uh, do that, we want to uh, go ahead and uh, get our announcements out of the way. I want to go ahead and do that. Um, <clears throat> and with that being said, we want to uh, let the people of God know that uh, that we do uh, have Announcements coming up, our 70th uh, Pentecost is coming up in 20, the calendar year of 2024. Uh, and we will be having our 70th anniversary of our annual Pentecost held in Ben Harbor, Michigan. And uh, the title is fully committed and uh, Second Timothy uh, 2 and 2, I believe. And we're going to be hosting it there in, in the city of uh, ben Harbor, Michigan, at Peace Temple, where Bishop Arthur Bullock is pastor and Mother Bullock. Uh, we also want to support them and their endeavor to host that. Uh, also, the dates are May 13th through May 19th of 2024. So please, um, if you could, please mark your calendars. We would definitely uh, love for you to be a part of that. Uh, also, we want to... Um, uh, put our next flyer up, which is going to be coming up. Uh, let's see if we can uh, do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can put our next flyer up. 
Yes, there will be um, there will be a renewing of vows uh, for uh, District Elder Bishop Elect uh, Tyrone Turner and uh, Lady Thelma Turner. Uh, Thirty years of marriage, and we want you to join them uh, in their renewal of their wedding vows, which is coming up in this month, uh, Friday, December 29th, uh, 2023 at 7 p.m. So please uh, mark your calendars and the address information is posted right there on the screen for you. We said we were going to work to get that uh, taken care of. And so we did. Uh, we ran to a couple uh, issues, but we were able to resolve that. So now we got it full screen for you where you can read and uh, definitely document that information. All right, and so we're gonna go to our next slide. Let's see what we got here. Uh, we got our brotherhood. Yes, that's what we got. We got our annual brotherhood coming up this weekend. I uh, believe December 9th at 6 p.m. on Saturday, and also Sunday, December 10th at 4 p.m. And we have Pastor Eugene Walton uh, and also District Elder Bishop Elect Raymond Johnson of the uh, New Mount Olive family and the Faithful Mission family going to be with us this weekend. So we ask that you would um, join us in uh, our uh, local brotherhood anniversary uh, here in the city of Milwaukee. And uh, it is going to be December 9th at 6 p.m. and December 10th at 4 p.m. on Sunday where those uh, services will um, start and so we ask that you would join us our titles men of virtue and uh since it's revival week uh time to restore and so we need uh the lord to restore his people after all that we've been through on this year uh there's restoration needed in the lives of the people of god and so come and uh be fueled up and uh filled up uh with the holy ghost fire so we ask that you would join us there on this particular weekend, if you can definitely uh, have time to come through and see us. We'd love to have you. Praise God. All right. And so we're going to go to our next slide, I believe. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, yep, we did. I think we did all of our flyers today. And so we want you to definitely um, please join us in that endeavor. And so now we want to... Um, go back to our our main screen for our scripture reading. So we're going to go to Genesis uh, chapter 12. Uh, we ask that you would go with us to Genesis uh, chapter 12. All right. So let's see. Let's just see how many of you. All right. That can join us to Genesis chapter 12. All right. Genesis chapter 12. And let's go to verse number 10. We're going to pick it up there. We we talked about some things uh, on, on Monday. Uh, but today we're going to talk about um, uh, the dispensation of promise. But the particular uh, topic we're going to talk about is the failure of men. And we're going to talk about the failure of Abraham. And uh, one thing that we must acknowledge uh, that there is failure in in mankind. I know uh, even those of us that are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, we may not want to admit it. But just so that we get a greater understanding about these lesson plans and these teachings, uh, there are certain vulnerabilities man must uh, be aware of, safeguard, and protect. And if we do not learn from these lesson plans, we will repeat some of these same mistakes and errors that uh, can be avoided. And one thing about history is that if we don't learn from it, we will repeat it. And so this is why we want to look at these lesson plans and uh, in comparison and contrast and draw uh, what we call a thought or 
a main thesis from this. All right. So we're going to draw a thesis from uh, this particular lesson plan. And this is one of the things we want to look at is man's failure. All right. And the dispensation of promise. All right. And uh, let's go to Genesis uh, 12 and uh, 10. And let's take a look. Uh, or, uh, I really could start at. Uh, verse number 11, but let's just take a look at verse number 10. And there was a famine in the land and Abram uh, went down to Egypt and sojourned there for the famine was grievous in the land. Uh, I know we heard the scripture, all things work together for the good. Uh, but sometimes I don't know if we recognize the good in everything that God does. So let's take a look. In verse number 11, and it came to pass uh, when he was come near to enter into Egypt, he said unto Sarai, his wife, behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. <laughs> and we're going to kind of we're going to kind of uncover this because a lot of people say, well, you know, uh, Abraham, you know. He uh, lies with the intent to deceive Abraham lied. Okay, but let's take a look at it. Let's analyze this. All right. We're going to analyze the scripture. Let's take a look. And he says, I know you're a fair woman. So uh, uh, Sarai, Sarah, his wife was not uh, a woman that was unfavorable to look upon. She was, uh, according to the scripture, described as a beautiful woman. All right. Fair to look upon. This Abraham uses the word fair. All right. And so uh, we're going to go a little bit farther. Let's take a look. He says in Genesis 12 and 12, he says, therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee. He tells her what to say. Thou, he said that, that they shall say, this is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. So Abraham had did some research, and apparently he knew the history of the Egyptians. And uh, the Egyptian was known for if um, a particular uh, representative of another nation uh, came down uh, before Pharaoh and they had uh, uh, a nice looking wife or concubine or whatever the case may be they were known to kill the people and take the women praise god this is what they were known for and so this is this causes some anxiety as we can see here as we analyze this this causes some anxiety or stress upon abram all right upon abraham all right so let's take a look <clears throat> Uh, let's go a little bit farther. And he says, he talks to Sarah and he kind of tells her what to say, how to deal with this situation. And you know, sometimes even in this dispensation, even under the promise, God had gave him a promise. I, we talk, we covered it on Monday, all the things God had laid out for him. But even in that, it seems as if he had, uh, you know, uh, some, uh, not doubt, but he had some reservations about how this promise was going to come about because he's looking at promise on one side and on the other side, he's looking at the Egyptians. If I go down here with my fair looking wife, they're going to kill me and they're going to take her and she's going to be alive and I'm going to be gone. All right. And so this is not to uh, uh, say that Abraham uh, doubted God, but this is to say that we all, we too, we face things that causes us. Uh, uh, he didn't stagger, but this is, it causes him uh, to ponder. All right. So let's take a look. He ponders this and he tells her what to say. All right. He says, say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, <laughs> that it may be well with me. He was concerned about his life. Hmm? For thy sake. And my soul shall live because of thee. And Sarah, you gonna you gonna you gonna you gonna be uh you gonna be a blessing unto me, Sarah. Hmm? 
by letting them know that I'm just, you know, you my sister. All right. Now let's take a look. The first failure of Abraham was not leaving all his relatives behind. He faithfully did that. Huh? And he went into the promised land that God had told him to get out of the country. Told him to leave. He left. He was obedient. And from thy kindred and from thy father's house. We can see that in Genesis 12, 1 through 3. But Abraham, uh, <laughs> uh, kind of um, gets into his next situation. The next failure was, <clears throat> well, let, let me just bring it like this here. Uh, his next failure was manifesting unbelief in God's preservation. Now, this is just uh, a note that I marked here. All right. So uh, uh, a lot of times, even with the Holy Ghost, uh, we believe uh, God can uh, do certain things on our behalf. But then on the other side, there's a fear that traumatizes us sometimes and stops us or places us at a standstill where we got to stand and look and really think about how we going to move toward the, uh, the promises that God has laid out. So let me, let me break it down to you. This is kind of where Abraham was. So we're on the tightest promise to how we are today. All right. And so we can look and see that, um, Sometimes we run into a patch in the road where um, uh, we believe that God can do uh, exceedingly abundantly. But then at some point in our walk, we manifest uh, doubt or unbelief because of fear. And we feel like uh, God is not able to perform us out of the next thing that we get into. Because hmm? some of us, we believe God can, uh, you know, uh, uh, take us to the next level. We believe God can uh, elevate us. God can uh, take care of us. God can, you know, uh, 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 work on our behalf. All right. But then there's times where we may get ill or dark days may come. We may get sick and we may feel as if, <laughs> oh, glory be to God, hmm? that what God has promised, not that he not going to deliver the promise but now we look into one that okay well lord how how i'm gonna do this hmm? oh glory be to god that sounds like some of us my friend sometimes we're wondering lord how you gonna do this hmm? with what's going on now hmm? and so this is what we gotta look at abraham's failure was manifesting unbelief in god's ability to preserve him hmm he believed God could give him the promise. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left his family and took out on nothing. He believed God at, at his word. But on the other side, once he starts his journey, he experiences uh, what we consider as uh, the testing of his faith. Hmm? Uh, the Bible in James talks about the trying of our faith. You know, uh, it work at patience. So now we can see his patience being dry. Oh, glory be to God. Because hmm? he know if I go down here with these Egyptians hmm? and they are subject uh, to take Sarah from me and he need to understand, oh, glory be to God, that God was going to deliver on the promise. Oh, glory be to God. We got to believe God going to deliver on his promise and we may not know uh, when, uh, and we may not know the where, but we can definitely uh, trust God in his word, all right? And so let's take a look here. All right, so Abraham goes through this uh, uh, temporary uh, uh, moment of uh, despair and anxiety that he experiences. And uh, what's so striking to me, he left Canaan uh, to go to Egypt in the time of famine. 
uh, uh, God permitted him to be tested. Now, God don't tempt any man with evil, but God permits Abraham to be tested. That's why when we see the word tempt, uh, I believe that's in Genesis 22. When we see the word tempt, we got to define that scripturally. Uh, that word tempt there meant test because God doesn't tempt man with evil. All right. Neither tempt he any man, you know, uh, with evil. And so we have to understand God will test us. Hmm? And we're going to get into it later. We're going to get down to it. But right now, I'm just want to jump forward to it. In case someone has some uh, reservations about that. All right. So let's take a look here. Um, Abraham failure. Uh, was he was considering uh, what was going to happen to him. And ultimately he was concerned about Sarah. All right. But he had to hold to what God promised him and be obedient. So we can see he goes down here uh, into Egypt. All right. All right. Let's see what happened when he go down there. Let's take a look. And it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, the Egyptians beheld the woman that she was very fair. Now the scripture said to them, she was really looking good. All right. Now that's, that's something to look at. Hmm? And it says the princes of uh, the princes also of Pharaoh saw her. Even the young princes was looking at her and commended her before Pharaoh. They spoke well of her and told Pharaoh, I guess they was getting Pharaoh worked up and they were telling Pharaoh about how good Sarah looked. All right, let's take a look. And Pharaoh and the woman was taken into the house of Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, bring her to me. I'm just paraphrasing. Let's take a look. And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. Now he was being real good to Abraham, praise God. Hmm? And he had sheep. Look what he did. Gave him sheep oxen and he asses and men servants and maiden servants hmm? even gave Abraham maids hmm? and she asses and camels. Look at the stuff he gave Abraham. Now we got to take some, we got to pull something away from this. Hmm? We shouldn't let uh, stuff that people bless us with uh, cause us to deviate from what God has promised. Hmm? We got to hold fast to the promise. Abraham gets all this stuff, and he know why he's getting it. He's getting it because of Sarah. <laughs> Let me get out of here. I got to go. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh. Look what God does. Now, this is what I'm saying. If God has promised something, he can protect what he promised. Oh, glory be to God. If God has laid a promise out over my life or your life, you're not going to go to the grave until God fulfills his promise. Oh, glory be to God. You can depend on God. Praise God. Look at this. And so uh, Pharaoh and his house uh, and the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah's, Abraham's wife. Look at this. Sarai, Abraham's wife. He did it because of the wife to protect Abraham. Look, look at that God protects the promise. Oh, because the promise was going to have to come through something. Oh, uh, y'all don't see this in the scripture, but I see this, you know, bright, highlighted in yellow. Praise God. The, the promise had to come through something. And so God was protecting what he had invested in. Oh, glory be to God. And you got to know if God has invested something in you, praise God, as a believer in Christ hmm, and laid a promise out over your life. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Look at this. And he says here in Genesis 12 and 18, we finna get in, get into this dispensation, uh, a promise dealing with the failure of men. We're talking about the failure of men. Look at the failure of men. And Pharaoh called Abraham and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Why didst thou not tell me uh, that she was thy wife. Now God had to show it to him, and he had to, he had to figure it out. Hmm? 
the hard way when he could have simply told the man that was his wife. Hmm? Can't you see the failure of us even today, how we try to fix things up, praise God? Hmm? Even before we go to our pastors and leaders, some of us, we're not, uh, you know, we're not straightforward and honest with our leaders about what's going on with us. But all oh, glory be to God. But you can never deceive the man of God. Hmm? He know what's going on with you. Praise God. All oh, glory be to God. Let me get out of here. Hmm? He knows what's going on with you because God has given him the oversight. Praise God. Hmm? And you might want to play around and, you know, kind of beat around the bush about what's going around wrong with you and what's going on with you. You might as well just tell him. Bitch. Oh, glory. Let me get out of here. You might as well just tell him what's going on with you so he can pray for you and help you. All right. Look at this. Now, sometimes we get not in a position, all oh, glory be to God, always to help ourselves. All oh, glory be to God. Sometimes we uh, we need others, and sometimes God intercede uh, on our behalf because we just won't own up to our failure. All right, let's take a look. Let's take a look now. And Abraham called, and I'm, no, I'm sorry, uh, Genesis 12 and 18, and Pharaoh called Abraham and said, called him and said, what is this that thou hast done unto me? Why dost thou tell me that she was thy wife? He said, why didst thou not tell me that she was your wife? Why you didn't do it? He said, why saidest thou she is my sister? Hmm? Anything that we use to evade truth or deceive, a lie, the definition of the word lie is with the intent to deceive. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Ain't no sin you trying to deceive the pastor by saying it's one thing and you know it's another. Oh, let me get out of here. If it ain't one thing, Bishop preached it. <laughs> it was years ago. This came back to my mind. My pastor, Bishop Merchant, he preached it. He said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. And that, that's true. That is so true. If it ain't one thing, it's another thing, praise God. But look at this. In Genesis 12 and 19, he says, Why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her uh, to me to wife. Now, therefore, behold thy wife, take her and go thy way. Look at this. God sends him there. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. I know a lot of us, we can't pull this out, but I see God sends him there, huh? sets him up to be blessed, and now he gets kicked out. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Huh? That place wasn't intended for you to stay there. Oh, glory be to God. I'm having a good time today, praise God. Huh? Some situations, we're just passing through. God didn't intend for you to stay in that place. Oh, glory be to God. Sometimes we get comfortable. We get in places. Oh, glory be to God that God has to move on us to get us out of. Hmm? I guess he was going to stay there and multiply and be comfortable. But hey, look at this. God allows through his, uh, oh, glory be to God, through his failure. Oh, glory be to God. God can take our failures and still turn them into successes. Oh, glory be to God. Do you hear me, my friend? God can take your failure and turn it into a success. Oh, glory be to God. Just keep trusting God. Look at it. Now, I'm going to go on here now. I'm going to get on down through here. But I want to share this with you. Uh, let's see, Genesis 12 and 19. Let's go to Genesis 12 and 20. Now, I'm going to go to Genesis 12 and 20 because I need to I need to get somewhere real quick. I had some scriptures marked, but I'm going to. Um, using my screen reader and my Bible at the same time. I like to kind of use both of them uh, to fast forward when I'm trying to save time. So we're trying to save time now. Now that we're down in here, the failure of us, the failure of men. And we don't want to, one thing men don't want to be, uh, don't want to uh, have a mission to is that, uh, that they have failure hmm? and that they're capable of failing. Hmm? And we don't want our wives to know we're capable of failure. Hmm? And we certainly don't want the pastor to know we're capable of failure. But the pastor already know. Let's take a look. 
So you might as well own up to it. Let's take a look. 12 and 20. I don't want to go on a little bit further. Let's take a look. 12 and 20. He says here, and Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. All right. And Pharaoh command, commanded his men concerning him. And uh, they sent him away and his wife and all that he had. Pharaoh didn't harm him. Pharaoh didn't even take the stuff back. Look how God sets this situation up. God sets it up and kicks him out of there hmm? with the stuff. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Huh? He goes down there and then he leaves. All right. Now let's talk about something here. It was clear. Uh, failure is not to believe the, uh, not to believe the promises of God. Hmm were true, uh, the, Egyptian, the, the Egyptians, uh, it goes back to the point I made. The, there's no way the Egyptian could have killed him because God had laid a promise out for him, all right? Uh, the, uh, the Egyptians or the enemy uh, sometimes try to frustrate us, hmm? Uh, into not believing God's purpose. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Huh? Uh, in the coming of the seed of the woman, he, you know. Huh? Uh, this, is, this is what I got noted here. Sometimes uh, the enemy try to frustrate God's purpose in the coming of the seed or what God has promised for us. Hmm? Uh, God intervened. This is what I want to show you, divine intervention. When, when we fail, uh, you know, in, 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 in most cases, now not in every case, but in most cases when God has, uh, well, in every case when God has a, a, a divine uh, uh, plan for his people, he will intervene, okay? Now, when we make our own plans, God will have mercy on us. <laughs> Let me quit there. God will have mercy on us to see us through so we don't ultimately be a total failure. You know, like sometimes our parents, you know, let us go through things so we can learn a lesson. And so God also do us the same way. He let us go through different things so we can learn obedience through the things we suffer. All right. But look, he will never let his divine uh, plan fail hmm, because of your failure. Oh, glory be God. Let me bring this out. All right. So the enemy uh, try to frustrate him. Hmm? Like he tried to frustrate the people of God from waiting on God's promise. Hmm? But we got to know that promise will be birthed. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> huh? That promise going to be birthed. And there is nothing that the enemy can do to stop it. Glory. But man's failure in the dispensation of the promise, I want to show you some. He was expelled from Egypt, and uh, he started his sojourn clearly uh, uh, apart from the will of God, and he failed uh, while he was there. Hmm? What are you saying he failed while he was there? Hmm? Because he could have walked in the promise and told the man up front, this is not my sister, this is my wife. Hmm? He could have done that. And God still was going to see him through. Some things and, 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 and certain things, when we know who we are and whose we are, we don't have to lie about getting, you know, uh, oh, let me quit, the quest card or snap benefits. Hmm? Some people go and during tax time, during tax season. I'm bringing it to our day. <laughs> Let me quit. Oh, glory be to God. Sometimes during tax season, we put our dog on the thing and say, oh, well, you know, we just do all kinds of stuff. You don't have to do that to be blessed. Hmm? You can stand flat foot on God's promise hmm? and be blessed with less. Oh, if that makes sense. I know it don't make sense. 
to the natural carnal man, but you can be blessed with less. You say, how that's going to work? God can take little and make much out of it and stretch it. Oh, glory be God. Huh? And the choir sing a song and they ain't sang in a while, but uh, it's called stretch out. Hmm? And all thing we got to do is take the little we have and stretch it out to the master. Oh, glory be to God. Look at this. And he can make much when we yield it to the master's touch. Now, let's take a look. Uh, uh, God was with Abraham. God was teaching, also uh, letting him know, I'm with you. Hmm? And it's coming back into Canaan. He finally separated from Lot. All right. He separates from Lot. And then God promised his seed to be as the stars of the sand of the sea. Let's go to it. I think we left there yesterday. I mean, uh, on Monday. I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to go to Genesis 13 now. Yep. Genesis 13 and 1. Say that with me. Let's take a look. In Genesis 13 and 1. He says here, And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. See that? And Abraham was very rich. This is where we left off on Monday. Now we now we back. We back where we need to be. Uh, he's very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. Can you see all the stuff he left with Egypt with? Abraham wasn't poor. Look at this. And he went on his journey from the south under Bethel unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and high unto the place of the altar where he made there at first and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Hmm? We talked about worship on Monday. Hmm? Abraham uh, did not fail to worship God. Hmm? He didn't let none of the things he experienced stop him from worshiping God. Hmm? Uh, it's very important. Uh, God appeared unto him and promises him a son. We're going to stay right there just for a minute. God promised him a son and offsprings as the stars and as the sand in the sea, of the sea. All right? Fifteen years went by, and that still was no promised son. Let's take a look. 15 years go by. Don't tell me people won't get in a hurry because time don't move uh, according to their time. Hmm? People get in a hurry. And we can see this with Abraham, but we also can see even in his failure, God upholds the promise. Hmm? Even though God make covenant with man, man fails his side of the covenant, but God still holds to the promise that he laid out for man. All right? Look at this. Genesis 15. Let's take a look. It says here, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Tells him again, I'm your shield, and I'm an exceeding great reward. Hmm? And Abraham said, Lord God, what would thou give me seeing I go childish? Hmm? Struggling now. Hmm? Sometimes we struggle internally hmm? with what God has promised. We struggle internally to see it birthed. Look at this. And the steward of my house, is this Eliezer of Damascus? He asked God a question. And Abram said, behold, to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine, heir. 
Abraham is getting concerned. Hmm? Look at somebody and say, don't worry. Hmm? Don't worry, but trust God. Hmm? Look at this. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, this shall not be thine heir, but that shall come forth out of thy own bowels and shall be thine heir. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Huh? When God lays out a plum promise, he said, it's going to come out of your own bowels. Hmm? Now, God makes it even more plainer to him. Hmm? Can't you see sometimes we struggle internally? Look at this. 15 years went by and still there was no promise, son. Hmm? And Sarah, she had a bright idea and she figured, let us help God out. Hmm? Let's take a look. He decides to help God out. But I want to go one more scripture. And he brought forth abroad and said, look now toward the heaven and tell thee the stars if thou are able to number them. And he said, so shall thy seed be. The word shall mean it's going to happen. Hmm? And ain't no maybe to shall. I mean, huh? It's going to happen. Hmm? And he believed in the Lord. Look what happened with Abraham. Scripture says here, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Hmm? He believed the Lord. Hmm? The Lord tells him and reassures him of this promise. All right. Let's go to Genesis 16. I want to go there real quick. I got to get to Genesis 16. Stay with me. Genesis 16, and let's skip down to, well, we'll just go there. Let's just go here. Genesis 16. And now Sarah, Abram's wife, uh, bare him no child. And he had an handmaid, an Egyptian, an Egyptians, an Egyptian who name was Hagar. Y'all see that? Haggai. Hmm? 15 years went by and 14 years went by and still there was no promise. That's a long time. Hmm? 29 more years went by and there was no promise. All right? God then he appears again to him and renews his covenant with him and confirms it hmm, by commanding circumcision. And at this point, Abraham was about 99 years old. Hmm? Ishmael was 13. Huh? Uh, when they were circumcised. Hmm? We're going to take a look here. Let's take a look. 16 and 2. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained from me from bearing. I pray thee. Hmm? Abraham didn't ask. But this is for all of those that want to uh, uh, decipher and discuss the scripture and, and uh, question, you know, uh, who came up with the idea. The Lord restrained me, Sarah says, from bearing. I pray thee. She asked him, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Hmm? Look at this. She wanted some children too, and so she help try to help God out and Abraham as well by permitting him to go into the handmaid. And Abraham hearkened unto the voice of Sarah. Abraham did not put up no fight. Hmm? You didn't see nowhere in the scripture where Abraham had to ask her a second time, do you really want me to do this? Hmm? Let's take a look. 
There was no discrepancy about it. Hmm? He went right ahead. Hmm? And uh, they were stricken in age. Huh? And God renews the promise. Look at this. Why they were stricken in age, God renews his promise. And Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. And went in unto Hagar, sorry, and went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Now, if she told him to do this, she hated that she told him to do it. Hmm? Have you ever made a decision? This is man's failure. Have you ever made a decision? And then after you made the decision, now you regretfully regretting that something you admitted and agreed to. <laughs> oh, glory. Let me get out of here. Huh? This is man's failure. Hmm? Nobody asked you to agree to this. Nobody even told you to do this. But this was your bright idea. Huh? And then when you uh, end up seeing the error of your mistake, now it's hard for you to chew on. Hmm? This is man's failure. Hmm? You agreed to it, and now you now you uh, regretfully, sorrowfully hmm, withdrawn that you have agreed to these terrible conditions. <laughs> Glory, let me get out of here. Huh? This is what happens to us. This is why we must acknowledge God according to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Huh? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Hmm? In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. It's a bad thing to go down your own road. Hmm? And when you get down there, you find out ain't nobody on the road with you but yourself. Because hmm? you left God, all glory be to God, on the right road. That means you got to turn around and go back. Because <laughs> oh, God ain't going to go down that wrong road with you. Oh, let me quit. I got to go. Hmm? You got to turn around and go back and repent, and just maybe the Lord will have mercy and go with you. Let's take a look. He says here, uh, Sarah said unto Abraham, my wrong be upon thee. Hmm? My wrong can cause you to be wrong. <laughs> oh, let me get out of here. All oh, glory be to God. Look at man's failure. Hmm? My wrong be upon thee, and I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she conceived, I was despised in her eyes and the Lord judged between me and thee. Let's take a look. But Abraham said unto Sarai, behold, uh, thy maid is in thy hand to do to her as it pleased thee. Now he says this, he he speaks something that's going to come back to bite him later. Oh, glory be to God. Abraham speaks something that's going to come back to get him later. Hmm? He says to Sarah, uh, she is your maid and you can do as you please with her. Oh, glory be to God. We go to the scripture when, when she despised uh, uh, Ishmael mocking Isaac. Hmm? And then uh, Sarah gets mad about it and says she got to go. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Then Abraham, he tries to not do what she said. She says she got to go. And Abraham was grieved about it. Praise God. But look what he had said earlier. He said unto Sarah, behold, thy maid is in thy hand to do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? I want to show you this because it's important to take a look at this because, you know, um, this time 
the decisions that were made by them both, hmm, it caused it problems in the home. Hmm? Look at man's failure. Now you can't blame nobody because y'all made, made this all up. Hmm? And it says, and the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water in the wilderness and by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said unto Hagar, uh, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou? And where did thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. Look how God has to straighten out. Oh, glory be to God. Look how God has to help straighten out what we mess up. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? This is man's failure. Man and woman's failure. Hmm? And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, and it shall not be numbered for the multitude. So God lays out uh, a blessing. He's going to multiply the seed of both nations. It's going to be, oh, glory be to God. Hmm? He's going to multiply the seed. Hmm? And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child and shall bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Hmm? And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man. Huh? And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence Huh? of all his brethren. All right? So we're going to stop there. Now let's take a look at man's failure. We had Genesis 16, 12. Now we're going to jump down to Genesis 17. We want to take a look at man's failure. We're going to go there. And when Abraham was 99 years old, when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. He said, walk before me and be thou perfect. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? God tells him to walk with him and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee exceedingly. Look at this test, how long it's lasting. Oh, glory be to God. Huh? You still, you still haven't had the promise sign just yet. Hmm? Look how long he goes through this testing, uh, through this trying. Hmm? Trying of his faith, work, and patience. Hmm? Look at this. And Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Hmm? God picks the time when he's going to bring forth his covenant. Look at this. We don't choose the time. We, huh? We don't choose the time or the place. Oh, glory be to God. Look at somebody and say, oh, glory to God. You can't hurry, God. You just got to wait. Hmm? And he says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Oh, that's some kind of covenant there. Look at this. And neither shall thy name uh, any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations, I have made thee. Hmm? No promise come before the name change. Hmm? Notice this. When the name change comes, then the promise comes along with it. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Huh? God tests not only uh, him, but he tests 
his character. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. That's something when your character has to be tested along with uh, your personality. Oh, glory be to God. Look at this. He tests him. Then he lays out this covenant again to him. And then he blesses him with a name change. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. Oh, glory. Oh, I could just, oh, this here is a good lesson plan today. Kings going to come out of him. And I want to let you know, even in the, this dispensation of promise and man's failure, hmm, God is still raising up kings. Oh, glory. Let me get out of here. I got to go. God is still raising up kings. Hmm? Not as we see in the Old Testament, but there is a king in each and every one of you. Hmm? If we have Christ on the inside, which is a hope of glory, there's a king in you. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. Oh, y'all got me worked up. But let me let me get out of here. Hmm? In Genesis 17, uh, we can see uh, God again appears to him and promises a son. Sarah was 89 years old. Hmm? Both Sarah and Abraham, they were past the age of child, of childbearing, hmm? parenthood. But God still renews his promise and told him that they will have a child the following year. Let's take a look. Let's take a look here. He says here in 17 and 7, I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. Can we see this lineage that God has already set up? Hmm? Dude, he set this everlasting covenant through this lineage by his promise that was laid out. And no matter how the enemy came at this promise, if we look through the scripture, through the lens of the scripture, we can see uh, Pharaoh, we can see Herodus, we can see all types of individuals that rose up to try to stamp out God's righteous seed. Never could be done. Glory! Hmm? Because... God always hmm, uh, intervenes and intercedes despite man's failure. All oh, glory be to God. And I want to encourage somebody today as I get off, I got to get off now. You might have a failure. Hmm? Doesn't matter if you bishop, pastor, elder, brother, sister in Christ, you may have a failure. Hmm? But we must never underestimate God. Because even when we when we are weak, then we can be made strong huh? through the promises of God. All oh, glory be to God. And that's why the scripture lets us know that we have treasures in these earthen vessels. But the excellency of the power has to be of God and not of us. And sometimes we fail. All oh, glory be to God. All oh, glory. Not Abraham, but sometimes we fail. Hmm? Because of our pride, because of our inability hmm, to trust and believe God. Hmm? Look at this. And he says here, I'm going to give unto thee and thy seed after thee and uh, the land wherein thou art a stranger. All oh, glory be to God. Even if you're in a strange land, hmm, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Hmm? God gave them cities they didn't build. Oh, praise be the name of God. Huh? Gave them cities they didn't build. Hmm? Gave them food vineyards they didn't plant. Look at this. Don't tell me how good God is. Hmm? I'm telling you, you can see it through the scripture. Hmm? 
You don't have to go on what somebody say. You can read it and see it through the scripture, how good God is. Look at it. And God said, and look, he witnessed to Abraham. And God said unto Abraham, thou shall keep my covenant, therefore. Hmm? And thy seed after thee in their generations. Remember last week I was talking about some things are perpetual generations. Some things are handwriting and ordinances, but some things are everlasting covenant. We got to look in the scripture and see what God is talking about when it, as it refers and connects to his everlasting covenant. Some things is from Genesis to Revelation is an everlasting covenant. We must study to find out which what are those covenants. All glory be to God. What God was saying to man, all from all glory be to God. From start hmm, to redemption. We got to see it. Look at this. He says, this is my covenant. I'm in uh, Genesis 17, 10. We're getting ready to go now. Stay with us. He said, this is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you. And thy seed after thee, every man, child among you, hmm, shall be circumcised. Look at this. This is where circumcision comes in. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of you, the foreskin, and shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. This Abrahamic covenant, hmm? God, God fulfills it, Christ fulfills it through the church. And so therefore now circumcision ain't anything. Hmm? But Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Hmm? This, this covenant here, oh, glory be to God, huh, was established between Abraham and God uh, for his people as a nation. Hmm? But when God, through the fullness of time, uh, the Bible says Simeon had declared that God did visit the Gentiles, take out of him the people for his name's sake, that was going to get to a point, oh, glory be to God, in God's covenant where he was going to, oh, glory be to God, converge. All men. <laughs> oh, let me get at it. Converge all men to be saved. Hmm? And it was going to be fulfilled through Abraham. Hmm? And therefore, the circumcision wasn't going to perform this covenant. Christ was going to do this. I know. I know it's a lot to cover. But Christ was going to do this. And at this point, Abraham had to do this. Hmm? <laughs> oh, let me get at it. I got to go. Huh? Abraham had to do this until the fullness of time. Let me get out of here. I got to go. But Abraham, he staggers not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith. And the Bible says he gave glory to God. Hmm? Counting that God was faithful to his word. God renews huh? Uh, the youth of Abraham and Sarah. Sarah. Hmm? Even though they were in old bodies. Nobody can perform a covenant like this but God. Though they were in their old bodies, the Bible said they were past childbearing. But he gave them youth and gave them pleasure. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. Look at this. In the old age. Now, this is scripture. huh? So there are some things when we can't physically perform. huh? But just because we can't physically perform it, does not mean that God cannot perform it. Oh, glory be to God. Huh? And the Bible says, he that begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. There it is. I got to let you go. Um, I hope we said something today to encourage the people of God on the Faith in God Internet TV uh, broadcast that we talk about the dispensation uh, of promise and we talked about man's failure. Uh, we can uh, we can talk about Isaac failure. We can talk about uh, failure after failure. Mm -hmm. But uh, on Friday, we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about the judgment in the dispensation of promise. That's one thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about three things on Friday. They're going to be brief in nature. 
We're going to talk about the judgment upon men in the dispensation of promise. And remember, I said every dispensation ends in judgment. We're going to talk about uh, the beginning of times of the Gentiles. And then we're going to talk about uh, the door of mercy open to the Gentile. All right. So those are the three things we're going to talk about as we go uh, further in uh, the uh, dispensation of promise. We I think we finished off man's failure. Uh, we could have talked about uh, Isaac failure. Uh, we could have talked about uh, Jacob's failure. Uh, and also we can talk about the failure of all men, which we will touch on just before we go. Um, uh, let's just, let's just read this note here. It says, not only did the chosen family fail God on many occasions to live up, uh, to the best light. Huh? So there's, there's failure, but everybody don't live up to it. Hmm. But the Gentiles. The nation of, of Gentiles among the Israel sojourned journed, and rebelled against God. Hmm? So we can see some things in reflection here uh, that righteous men were mentioned in this period. Um, there were Melchizedek, huh? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Sariah, Moses, Job, and a few others that are mentioned in Scripture being righteous in this period. But as a whole, the nation were given over to idolatry huh? Uh, and sin. Some cities and nations specified being very sinful. The Amorites, the Sodomites, uh, Gomorrah, Egypt. And so these are, these are wicked uh, uh, nations and forces and people, hmm? generations of people that walked in darkness, all right? The majority of men in every age failed to live up to the light that they had received. God gave them the light, but they failed to live up to it. And for this, they shall receive judgment, uh, the judgment of God. And so we're gonna, uh, as we close out, we're gonna go to, uh, praise God, we're gonna go to Romans uh, 2 and 12. Praise God, we're gonna get that, Romans 2 and 12. I got the, I got to get out of here, but I need to close this out. Uh, man's failure. All right. Let's go to uh, Romans uh, 2 and 12. I think that'll get it. Let me see if I can put that on the screen real quick. Romans uh, 2 and 12. I need to read that. And then we're going to get out of here. Romans 2 and 12. All right, so we're going to go to Romans. Uh, let's take a look here, Romans 2 and 12, and let's see what we got here through 16, all right? 2 and 12 through 16. It says here, for as many as have sinned without the law shall perish without law, and as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Hmm? For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers. This is where James uh, uh, 1 and 22 talks about, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. It's a direct reference into this where it says uh, the hearers of the law are just before God. This is for not the hearers of the law are just before God. So just hearing the law don't make us just. But the one that obeys it and do it. But the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Paul brings this out. Uh, 15, 2 and 15, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience, also bearing witness and their thoughts through the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. 
2 and 16. And the day when God shall judge the secret of man. This is, uh, I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of, uh, of, of where we're headed, but in the day when God shall judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ, hmm? according to my gospel. Huh? And that means all oh, glory be to God. That means from start to all oh, glory be to God until grace. Hmm? And so doesn't matter. God is going to judge the secret of men. Hmm? So this is why it's important for us to see uh, the failure of all men in general fail to uphold the law. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 1, it says, therefore now there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It says, for what the law could not do. Hmm? This is right here. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Hmm? Some men thought, oh, glory be to God, they secrets wasn't going to be revealed. <laughs> oh, let me get at it. I got to go. But God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in the believer that's a doer of the word. Huh? Hmm? It's fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This is why uh, I talked about the law of the spirit uh, is life. When we talked about it four or five series earlier, I talked about the law of the spirit being life. And if we don't have the spirit of Christ in us, then we're dead men walking. And so this is why uh, we can see man's failure and every dispensation uh, up until Jesus Christ. And so, it's very important that we look at these things in contrast to uh, how God has uh, redeemed mankind and brought us into this new and living way. So I'm excited about it. Uh, there's a lot of things we want to talk about, but we're going to talk about the judgment of God uh, in the dispensation of promise next, the beginning uh, of the time of the Gentiles, and then we're going to go into the door of mercy. We're going to talk about the door of mercy open to the Gentiles. So please join us back here if the Lord's will, on, on Friday on our Touch and Agree Prayer Hour. I want to put these slides back up on the screen because we want to um, let the people of God know uh, to save these dates. Um, so we're trying to do some new things with the technology. As you can see, we've been working feverishly to uh, promote this and do this. We want to help all of our churches and our organization and our ministry and those of you that uh, want to get into the social media uh, uh, automation. We have developed uh, a system where this can be done uh, with the push of a button. You don't have to be, uh, we're trying to get things simplified to a way where we can just have a button pusher and uh, simply get these things done. We don't, you don't need to have uh, a degree in social media. We're getting it to the point now where we just need a button pusher and you can push the button and we can have these different things uh, happening in your church if you have a media ministry. And so uh, save the date, District Geller, Bishop-elect Lady Turner, and uh, I'm, I'm Bishop-elect uh, Tyrone Turner and First Lady Thelma Turner uh, at the True Holiness Family there in Dixmore, Illinois. They're going to be renewing their um, wedding vows uh, on Friday, December 29th at uh, 7 p.m. The information is on the screen. Uh, if you have the ability to come and encourage and support them, please save that date. All right. So we're going to go to our next. Um, we're going to go to our next um, flyer. We do are going to be hosting our 70th annual Pentecost, which is coming May 13th through the 19th. Um, we did have to correct the date on that. Uh, the theme is fully committed. Uh, the convention, the Pentecost convention will be held in the city of Ben Harbor, Michigan at Peace Temple, where Bishop Arthur Bullock is the pastor and Mother Bullock. And we ask that all the saints will come and support uh, the convention and the organization in that endeavor. And so please save that date. That's in the calendar year of 2024, uh, May 13th through the 19th. All right. 
So we're going to go to our next uh, slim, uh, slide here. We do have our annual brotherhood, uh, which is uh, going to be held here on this weekend at Pentecostal Power Church, Milwaukee. And we also will be live streaming that at PPCMKE. Uh, please join us on uh, Saturday uh, at the six o'clock hour. Pastor Eugene Johnson is going to be our uh, Eugene. Uh, Pastor Eugene Walton is going to be our speaker for Saturday at uh, 6 p.m. And on Sunday, we will be uh, closing that service. Uh, Bishop uh, elect uh, District Elder Raymond Johnson will be our speaker for Sunday at 4 p.m. So please come and support us in our local brotherhood service if you'd like to do that. And we'd love to have you as our friend and our guest uh, here in this great city of Milwaukee where Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison Sr. is our pastor. All right. And so that's all we pretty much had today. Um, we want to uh, just let everybody know that we love you with the love of the Lord. I hope we said something to encourage the people of God. Uh, I want to say God bless you in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining the Faith in God Internet TV broadcast. Uh, with no further ado, we want to uh, just thank all of you uh, for joining us. And we're going to let you go at this time. Uh, all right. So we're going to let you go. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we want to say God bless you in Jesus' name. And thanks for joining the Faith in God in that TV broadcast. God bless you.